Today, Mark and I are still at Car Creek Park in Seattle, Washington. And it's raining a little bit. It's starting to rain, a little Seattle rain. It's called liquid sunshine mm -hmm. in the Northwest. And uh, Mark is going to demonstrate symbolizing English sentences into our truth functional propositional logic language. So uh, we're assuming that you understand the basic idea of the symbolism he's going to use. Take it away. Okay, well, we've got three uh, translation problems here. I find translation to be one of the lo last things I get good at with logic. Uh, it's not a thing you learn immediately. It takes some time, takes some practice. Don't sweat it if you don't get it all right away. It just is going to take a little bit of time, but it's doable. There's about a thousand different tips, Paul, or I could give you. We're not going to give them all. Couldn't give them all to you online here with, uh, with the video, but let's see if we can do something. First thing I'm looking for is the main operator, main connective. And if the, assuming the sentences are written correctly and unambiguously, sometimes a comma can help. I'm seeing one comma right here. That's probably going to give me a good tip of what the main operator, main connective will be. It's right near the word yet. I know the word yet functions like and. It's going to get an ampersand. So that's going to be my main operative. To the left of that is wand is wet. That's an affirmative claim. So we'll have that be Oh, wait a second, we've got more stuff up here. I didn't even see all that. Crud. Okay, we've got either Dale is not dry or Wanda is wet, comma. That's still going to be my main operator. So to the left of the comma, we're going to have a big either or statement. Either Dale is not dry or Wanda is wet. And there's my main operator. Okay, so this will be an or statement. Or gets a wedge. Dale is not dry. That's a negative statement. If we had Dale is dry, I'd make that capital D. Affirmative claims would be uh, the capital letters. But here we're negating it, we're denying it. So I'll have, it is false that Dale's dry, or Wanda is wet. That's an affirmative statement, so we'll use a single capital letter for that. To the right of the yet, we have Mark is dry. Not quite true, uh, but I can translate it even though it happens to be false in the real world. Okay, so we have, again, the main connective, yet. On the right is Mark is dry, an affirmative statement. Left is a big either or statement. Dale is not dry or Wanda's wet. Let's do this one a little more carefully. Either both PETA is a dentist and Phil is a physician, comma, or Opal is an optometrist. And that comma is right near the word or, so this is going to be a big disjunction. Material on the left will be the left disjunct, material on the right, the right disjunct. Let's look at the left side. Okay, this either is connecting with the or, so the left-hand disjunct is going to be both PETA is a dentist and Phil is a physician. That's a conjunction. So if PETA is a dentist, an affirmative claim, getting a single capital letter. D for DITA, DITA. Okay, DITA is a dentist. Love that assonance. And Phil is a physician, P. Put that in parentheses, so that as a unit will be the left-hand disjunct. The right side of the or is opal is an optometrist, an affirmative claim, just getting the O that's suggested here. Third one, it is false that either Guangzhou, otherwise known as Confucius, is intellectually weak or Mozu is not a utilitarian. There's no commas there, but the or is going to indicate the main operative, the main operator, main connective. The left side, it is false that is false at either. God, I should read this beforehand. It is false that what I would be doing in my mind is I know I got a tilde, and what's going to be denying is this either. It's not denying the K, it's not denying the M, it's denying a disjunction. So we've got a big negated disjunction. It is false at either Kongsu is intellectually weak or Moza is not. It is false that Moza is a utilitarian. So what I'd suggest is try to find the main connective first. Break that, you can break the problem down in a couple spots that way. You can look at the left side and the right side after that. And then can I jump in here? Jump in here, Paul. Okay. I think that was excellent. I just want to emphasize that when we start symbolizing, I like to look at the comma as breaking the sentence in half. Mm -hmm. So it's yeah. a breaking point and it says that's one, oops, it says all of that's one half and then all of this is the other half and that's why Mark made this the main connective. So this half is 
a negated D for Dale. So D actually stands for Dale is dry, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. And then the not catches the not part. And the reason that um, Mark put a tilde here is that we want that whenever we see a connective in the English sentence, we want it to be represented in our symbolic sentence. So rather than let D stand for Dale is not dry, he lets D stand for Dale is dry and lets the not be captured by the tilde. Mm -hmm. so, we did, there's just not that many words in our language. This is a really simple language. If it was a French class, you'd be learning 13 verbs and 20 adjectives a day. Here you've got basically five words, not, and, or, if, then, if, and only if. We want to be able to pull out every little nuance we can, and if we have an affirmative claim being denied, we want to be able to use what little vocabulary we have to get out what uh, details we can. I think that's a good point. The, the reason that we want to let uh, cap, let the not be represented by a tilde is we're trying to catch all the logical nuances in the sentence. Yeah. And the nuance that's captured by having D stand for Dale is dry and having a tilde capture the not is that we have an affirmative sentence denied. Mm -hmm. But if we let the D stand for the whole Dale is not dry, we wouldn't catch that nuance. I like that. Yeah, and if we use that same line of reasoning, letting D stand for Dale is not dry, why not just have D stand for the entire thing? Yeah. Which would be absurd. We would be lo losing then all kinds of nuances. you miss all the logical details yeah. inside yeah. the sentence. So the purpose of the symbolic sentence is to capture the logical structure without any worrying about all the overtones of the English language and, and things that are not logical, mm -hmm. not related to the logic of it. So uh, anyway, and the reason that Mark put parentheses around the not D wedge the W is that the parentheses tell us these go together as a logical unit which is then conjoined to this. Why? Because an and only takes two things. It takes something here and something here. So we have to tell you that this is all one unit. And it would be ambiguous without it. If you didn't have those parentheses, you wouldn't know which was the main connective. And it would be a completely ambiguous statement. Whereas, as is written in English, that comma lets me know that this is the center part of the statement. This is the main operator. Yeah, in other words, if you took the parentheses out, we wouldn't know whether the and joins the W to the M and then that's joined to the not D, or whether the wedge joins these two and that's joined to the M. Mm -hmm. Without the parentheses, it would be ambiguous between those two interpretations. And uh, just quickly, uh, the word both is a coordinating phrase that groups Dita and Phil together, and that's why he put parentheses here and grouped them together. And then the or is clearly the main dividing point of the sentence, but the comma tells you that too. So the comma says, that's half, that's half, which is what this captures. And the it's false that, when sometimes it's not clear what a negation operator applies to. Without that either, this would be ambiguous, I think. Sure. Might be. But anyway, the sure. word either there, Marx pointed out, tells you that the negation operator applies to the disjunction and not to one individually. So that's why he puts them into a disjunction and then applies the tilde. Remember that the tilde applies only to what's to its immediate right. To its immediate right is this parenthesis, which mates with this parenthesis, telling us the tilde applies to the whole disjunction, not to one part. So that's why this works. All right. Thank you.